first step is to remove the branches. Then Enchzaya saws out a notch in the trunk. She has plenty of help from her fellow students. For the past week, they've been learning which trees to fell, how to build a fire break, and other aspects of forest management. I really enjoy the work outdoors. Cutting up a tree trunk isn't hard at all. Making sure you don't damage other younger trees is the tough part. Most people think it's a job for men, but I'm learning how forestry can also be a nice profession for women. It's not just about cutting down trees. It's also about cleaning the forest. We're in Selenga province in northern Mongolia, 200 kilometers north of the capital Ulaanbaatar. This forest, comprised of fir, pine, birch, and larch trees, is used for training purposes. Budding foresters from the town of Zunkara come here every couple of months for field experience. The mountains of Selenga extend to the southern border of the Siberian taiga. The famed coniferous forests are retreating north, however, as slowly but surely they shrink. Climate change has been a primary factor. As temperatures rise, permafrost thaw increases. Excessive moisture causes tree roots to start rotting, and then the trees die. That in turn endangers the natural habitats of deer, bear, wolf, and moose populations. Mongolia has beautiful forests. They're natural, not created by man. They're home to all manner of plants and animal species. I'm happy to be here and would never move to the city. Even if I had the chance to travel, I'd prefer to stay in the forest. I could never be happy living in the city. The city is the sprawling metropolis of Ulaanbaatar, home to an estimated half of Mongolia's 2.8 million inhabitants and they need wood and other raw materials for building and heating. The country's economy has been booming for years. The biggest contributors to that growth are mining, dredging and other extractive industries. Gold mining companies, for example, take huge amounts of water from rivers for washing the metal. A large part is blown off as steam and doesn't return to the rivers. So there's a greater likelihood of forest fires. And climate change on a global and local scale is increasing tree mortality in the taiga. Out in the countryside, the German development agency GIZ is on the ground to combat deforestation in Mongolia. Among its tasks, helping the government implement a range of environmental projects. The parliament and ministry of the environment have introduced reforms to the law and set up a nationwide plan for addressing the challenges of climate change. What's still lacking is the qualified staff to put those moves into practice. And that's where the German project comes in. Zunkara, where the taiga turns into more temperate grassland, or steppe, is home to the region's largest vocational college. This is where the next generation of foresters and environmental engineers are produced. The textbooks were written together with German experts. Trainees learn how to nurture young trees and create and expand nurseries, and how many trees per hectare they can harvest sustainably. That expertise will also be passed on to their successors.
The college admits many young people straight from high school and a number of unemployed people. The college actively recruits women, promoting the job of forester as an attractive profession for the future. My parents were very happy when I told them I wanted to become a forester. My father has a patch of land leased for 60 years from the government. Every time I come home from school, my parents give me more encouragement. It's a hobby for us, they say. But you can make it your profession. The college also has cooperative programs with partner companies, such as this sawmill. The idea is to ensure that Ensaya and her fellow students have employment in the future. In the long term, the government wants to see only approved firms selling timber. To gain that status, companies will have to prove that the amount of trees they cut down does not endanger the forest. Another condition, having environmental engineers on their team. Mongolia needs almost 3,000 experts to make the plan a reality. A third of that quota is set to be met within the next three years. It's their input that could determine whether the taiga survives. <laughs>